This is the first of our series of lectures on infinite sets, and you'll notice that for the balance of the lectures, I'm going to summarize the uh, material from the rest of Chapter 5, and so I call it Section 5.2 through 5.5. In this lecture, we're going to give the definition of infinite, denumerable, and countable sets, and we'll give a few simple examples. So we say that a set is infinite if it is not finite. So you'll remember that the term finite is a technical term. It means that either the set is empty or there exists a natural number little n such that a and set n sub n, which is given by this, have the same cardinality. In other words, there's a bijection from uh, one of these sets to the other set. And therefore, if a set is infinite, then that means that this doesn't happen. So that means that the set is not empty, and for every natural number n, there is no bijection between a and n sub n, or vice versa, from uh, n sub n to a. So with this theorem, we give our first example of an infinite set. The set of natural numbers is infinite. Now, I'm sure that the fact that the natural numbers is infinite is obvious to you, but still it requires a proof. And how would we do that? We have to prove that it is impossible for any natural number n to have the same cardinality as capital N. And so if we're going to show it by contradiction, we should assume that there exists a natural number little n and a bijection from n sub n to n. Um, and presumably that should lead to a contradiction. Now suppose we have a bijection from n sub n, the set of natural numbers from 1 through n, into n. Um, what should be impossible about that? Well, it seems clear that we can make an injection, a one-to-one -one function from n sub n into n, but it doesn't feel as if it's possible that there's a surjection, an onto function, from n sub n to n. But how do we show that? How do we argue it um, in, a, in a precise way? Well, there are several ways to do it, but one trick is if we look at the sum of all of the f values from 1 through n, right, there are only n elements of this set. Each of these numbers is a natural number, so each of them is positive. And, but the numbers, the individual numbers on this list are the only things that are in the uh, range of f. And so the question is, is it possible for this to be in the range of f? That would certainly be a natural number, but possibly not in the range of f. So that's the idea of the proof. So let's now uh, write down the details of it. We argue by contradiction. Suppose that n is finite. Then that means that there exists a natural number n and a bijection f from n sub n into n. Now we let y be this particular number, or we choose y to be this particular number, and now we're going to argue that it's impossible for that to be in the range of f. So since each term in this sum is a natural number, and therefore positive, it follows that for each k in the natural numbers, if k is smaller than or equal to n, then f of k is smaller than y, because we've listed all of the f of k values here, and we're adding them all together, so that must be strictly bigger than any particular term in the sum. Well, that proves that there's no x in n sub n such that y is equal to f of x, because the only f of x values are the ones on this list, and this is bigger, the sum is bigger than any one of them. So that <coughs> says that you cannot find an x in your domain equal to this particular y, in your codomain, and therefore f is not surjective, and that contradicts the fact that f is supposed to be a bijection. And therefore we've proved that n is infinite. Well, how can we produce more infinite sets? We don't have to keep going through the same argument. Now that we know that n is infinite, then any set uh, that has the same cardinality of n as n is also infinite. So remember, having same cardinality means there's a bijection um, between n and that set. Well, before we give examples, I want to point out that sets that have the same cardinality of n are infinite, but they're infinite of a special nature, and we give them a special name. 
We say that a set is denumerable if it has the same cardinality as the natural numbers. We refer to it as countable if either it's denumerable or finite. And if it's not countable, in other words, if it's not denumerable and not finite, we say that it is uncountable. Well, let's see if we can write down a few other examples of denumerable sets. Um, I'm going to let E denote the set of even natural numbers. And um, I've said, recall that we've seen that E is um, has the same cardinality as N. Actually, the E that we looked at before, I think, was the set of all even integers. So this time I'm just letting E denote the set of even natural numbers. And it's an easy f exercise for you to show that the function that maps N into E given by X goes to 2X um, is a bijection. So you know, see that 1 maps to 2, 2 maps to 4, four uh, uh, 3 maps to 6, etc. That seems to be generating all of the even natural numbers in a one-to-one -one way. So that's a bijection, and therefore E is an example of a denumerable set. It has the same cardinality as N. Uh, if we let O denote the set of odd natural numbers, so remember in, in, pre in earlier lectures we let O denote the set of all odd integers, but this time we'll just let it be the odd natural numbers. Well then, the function from O into E given by X goes to X plus 1 I think you'll find it an easy exercise to prove that that is a bijection. For example, 1 maps to 2, uh, 3 maps to 4, 5 maps to 6, etc. So since E is denumerable, that means there's a bijection from E to N. So therefore, if you compose, you'll see that you get a bijection from O to N. And therefore, O is also a denumerable set. Well, in the next few lectures, we're going to see some rather surprising examples of denumerable sets. Sets which, on the surface, appear to be much, much bigger than, um, than n, but which we'll prove are really no bigger in the sense of cardinality. They are merely denumerable. But we'll also see that there's a great variety of different kinds of infinite sets. We'll see that there are lots of different kinds of uncountable sets, sets which are not denumerable. Um, and among the set of uncountable sets, we'll see that there are lots of different kinds of uncountable sets. In other words, there's always something, there's, also, there's always a kind of uncountable set which is bigger than any given kind of uncountable set.